Hello, and welcome back to our Red Run Challenge in Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, where today we are going to be taking on a Pink Rathian, because I do believe she's our last key quest before our next urgent here in Moga. And I want to do our next urgent so that we can start going to the Tundra, and thus upgrade some more weapons. So, we gotta do this Pink Queen of the Peaks. So let's get to it. We gotta grab ourselves a meal first. Yeah, I don't really have much fresh, but this ought to be fine for now. We're going for fire starter because I like the idea of not being quite so weak to fire when fighting a pink Rathian, especially with those flame chomps she's got. So yeah, hopefully we'll get fire starter. Good. Feline fighter is worthless, but fire starter at least means something. So now, let's uh, get going and play with this queenie. Okay, so she starts over in the cave, so let's go ahead and make our way over there. Yeah, this waterfall definitely looks way different in Double Cross. Okay, this... This seems like a big Rathia. But hey, it doesn't matter how big she is. All that matters is that we get that tail of hers. Also her face, and at least one wing. But, like, the tail is the harder one of those to get. Especially if I don't have my flashes ready when she starts her flip. Though it would have been okay if I ended up throwing it there. But I do like to... If she does a flip, I like to make sure to throw it with proper timing. Because that way, you'll never have her choose to do something and cause you to miss it. This is going to be too far behind or she'll have turned too much. I guess that's also a thing. So if it was in the right place, then she couldn't have caused me to miss it. But she made the right place be a different place than it could have been. And I don't think it was gonna be in the right place to begin with, so that was really on me. Uh, we'll just put on some of that old-fashioned sweep-the-leg mechanics that we used so well against the Rathaloses in the last episode. So now that we've gotten that leg, it's time to work on the other one. So let's get to work over here on this right, or left. Yeah, this is her left leg. And there we go. Wow, you can clearly see the part of the tail that gets cut off in that lighting there. Incidentally, in Monster Hunter World, uh, if you're fighting a tempered Anjanath, it is usually pretty darn clear what part of the tail gets cut off, because it takes the light a little differently. Man. Just an interesting little thing. It really is kind of fascinating how far the lighting system came in this game relative to previous Monster Hunters. Because I've said before that this was the first Monster Hunter game with dynamic shadows. Like, the fact that her shadow is actually her shadow instead of just a blob. This is the first Monster Hunter game to do that, but it's also the first Monster Hunter game where shadows could be cast by parts of the monster onto other parts of the monster. Like, when she was knocked down, we were able to see, like, the ridges on her tail casting shadow onto the rest of her tail. That was something that never happened in a previous Monster Hunter game. So just the light, like, we can see her wing casting a shadow on her there. 
is something that previous Monster Hunter games had never done, and it looks really nice. Like, without it, the monsters have just really flat colors. Here, have a flash. Like here, we can see the ridges on the tail casting a shadow onto the rest of the tail. Now just imagine that those shadows didn't exist. And you've got what every Monster Hunter game before this looked like. Like it really adds a sense of, like, reality to the monster. Certainly believability. And we are not in a good way right now, but she is tossing some fire at Kayamba, who is now gone. And we are all alone. Well, now Cha-Cha's here, but I still need help. Oh, she's leaving. In that case... Oh, hey, we got the stamina boost. That's good. And what dance are we doing, Cha-Cha? Nice. So now we're at full health. I'm going to go ahead and sharpen here. Oh, looks like she is going this away. What just shook this place? Did a Jaggy bite the pillar and that cause a screen shake? That's odd. Never knew a Jaggy could be that powerful. Man, looks like someone's tired. So actually, as I did with the Rathalos in the last episode, I should avoid getting leg hits while she's tired. Because getting a knockdown while she's tired is just throwing away potential inactive time for when she's enraged. She's not going to be tired forever. She's got way too much health being a high-ranked Pink Rathian for me to kill her in just the time it takes for her to recover from this tiredness. So I would be doing myself a disservice if I knocked her down during it. And hey, we can still get like one or two tail hits. Face hits galore, which are just fine because face hits help her health not be so high. And not so high is exactly where I want her health to be. And since she's leaving, let's go ahead and grab some of this honey. Just because we're going to need a lot of honey to sustain us in high rank. We're actually pretty lucky we didn't get any royal honey whatsoever. Also, did she seriously just go three areas in one go? And she took the long way, too. Well, maybe not the long way as the crow flies, but certainly the long way as far as we're concerned. If only this was Gen 4, I could totally jump off of that stump and try and mount her. But this is Gen 3. That was not a thing yet. Let's see if we can grab this without paying for it. Whoa! We barely avoided paying for that. And now she's angry? Yep, so she gets flashed. Uh, we're stuck on the wrong side of her. I should have just gone for the wings. That would have been smart, because we do want to break the wing. But I was too busy focusing on the tail, as if nothing else mattered. But other things do matter. Uh, it doesn't really matter that much, because as far as I'm aware, I don't really have any intent to make her armor like I might if it turns out that I can't make anything else because I mean his defense is nice I suppose 
but I don't really care for any of the skills as far as I can remember. And I don't care for the look. And I don't need her weapon either, so like, Rathian parts are almost worthless to me. And that could change with Gold Rathian, but she's post-game content, so like, it won't. need to use some quicker heals. Oh, hey, we got the stamina again. I have been playing too much Monster Hunter World. I saw the vines coming down from that tree, and I was like, oh, yeah, she's going to get caught. At least in my brain, I was like that. But then she didn't get caught in the vines because this isn't Monster Hunter World, and that's not a thing that happens before that game. sad that we're out of flashes. Could certainly use more. But at least we have the tried and true method of hit the feet until she falls over. So that was the left foot. Now we gotta go for the right foot some more. But first we gotta roll off this fire. I'm not fond of being ablaze. quite sure what we flinched, but it was something. And there's that foot. Not a great time to lose sharpness. But it seems we've still got a ways to go before the tail pops off. I actually kind of expected it to be off by now, but I guess things don't always go as I expect. That's kind of the point of this run, though, is to deal with things that I can't expect. Like, I have no way of knowing what armor I'll be able to make during this run, nor what weapons. I just know what stuff I've got better chances of. And I know how to influence my chances. Like, for example, if I thought I needed a Rathian Ruby, I would catch this lady, but honestly, I don't. So, yeah, we'll just be killing her. Unless, for some reason, the box has capture supplies. Which I doubt it would. Would have been great if I got a tail cut there, but it was not to be. Also would have been great if I got one right there. tail will come off at some point. Just you watch. You know, it occurs to me, if I gave these two little jerks the uh, antidotal ability so that they couldn't be poisoned, then they'd probably save their antidote dances exclusively for me instead of using it for themselves like they sometimes do. Oh, no. Well, then. I suppose that's run over. Kind of a shame to end it here, but yeah, we can't always be lucky. Wasn't much I could do about that other than just have higher defense or more health. Like, I don't think I was that low on health when I took the first tail swing there. So yeah, that was just poor positioning, poor luck. But hey, I can't win them all. And that's just how it's got to go. Kind of sad I couldn't get as far in this one as I did in Generations or in uh, For You, but eh, such is life. So let's just go ahead and find an appropriate gesture. And that would be Lament. And with that... This run ends. 
So I guess uh, that's it for this run. I hope you've enjoyed watching as much as I've enjoyed playing it. It is fun coming back to 3U. I, I really do like this game. There's a lot that it did right. Like, even though, gameplay-wise, I really prefer World. Like, World is fantastic in terms of gameplay. This game's roster and the sheer variety of what it's got, I really enjoy. Definitely one of the better Monster Hunter games in that regard. What are these Shakalakas doing? Yeah, that's it for this run. And I will see you in the next game.